Hi, welcome to our second part of Unit 4. Let's see where we've been. So last time, you learned how to use the design recipe to write programs that solve given problems. Today we're going to practice applying the design recipe to some new problems. The design recipe is a roadmap for defining functions, which programmers use to make sure that the code they write does what they want it to do. Um, so each step builds on the last. Any mistakes can be caught early in the process, and here's the series of steps. So moving from a word problem to a contract, right? So we practice that and we'll practice that more today of we look at the problem and we can figure out the parts of the contract. And then we write examples based on that contract and define the function based on the examples. So it's always clear we can go one step at a time. So let's look at four word problems here. Um, I'll do one, and then you can do the other three. So we're going to write down the contract. Um, so we'll make sure we have a good name for each function, and the domain and range that are just going to be types. right? So we're just going to write down the contract first. So I'll do this first one. Um, and I have my um, notebook ready. I use it for um, a lot of stuff through the day, kind of very similar to the the notebook that I have you use for this class, video notebook. So that's what I'm going to use. Define a function purple star that takes in the size of the star and produces an outlined purple star of the given size. All right, so the parts of the contract are the name. Well, it looks to me like the name of this, um, this function should be purple star. So I'm going to start with a semicolon and type in purple star. All right, colon. All right, it takes in the size of the star and produces an outlined purple star of the given si size. So it takes in the size of the star. The size of a star is a number. And it produces an outlined purple star of the given size. So it is a star, and a star is an image. All right, so there's the contract. All right, so pause now, and um, you, in your notebook, write the contract for these next three functions. All right, good. Hopefully you have a contract for the next three functions. A contract is the foundation for a function. It gives the programmers just enough information to use them, the name of the function, the type of data it expects, and the type of data it returns. So now that we've completed the contracts for all four of our word problems, try to generate two examples for each one. And you know what? Even though they didn't tell us to, I think we should go ahead and do a purpose statement. Um, that helps me remember um, so I don't have to keep looking back here. So. I'm going to write down a purpose statement that says produce an outlined purple star of the given size. So that has what I want to produce and what I'm going to be given. Do I do any calculation? I don't do any calculation. Um, I, the size is what's going to be given. And I'm going to have an outline in purple as the uh, some extra details that I'm going to supply in mine. All right, good. So um, now... Now we want to write our two examples. I think that'll be easier to do. So, example. Okay, example, and I'm gonna say, let's see, purple star. And it looks like I typoed that star. Purple star of the given size. So let's make a size 50. 
and that should produce. And if you don't know, like sometimes I don't know, so what the great thing about being able to go into DR or Dr. Racket, just check. So I want a star of 50. And I know solid is a name, purple. And if this works, then we'll make it, it's not supposed to be solid. Okay, that is a purple 50 star. But our purpose statement says it's supposed to be outlined. I don't know if the right, if outlined is the right name. Or you can do control up arrow to just get your last thing. So I'm going to try outlined. Is that correct? Um, so I didn't like outlined. So now I'm going to go here and star and press F1. And that will open up the documentation for star. So I always like to make a good guess first. And then if my guess doesn't work out, then I can look at the thing. So here we go. What are the modes? So I'm going to click on, so, you know, it told me, um, just like a design recipe, the, the documentation tells me I need a mode. And the correct modes are, ah. Uh, outline not outlined so let's go back here to where i'm testing control up outline yes okay so star 50 or purple star 50 needs to produce a star 50 outline purple. Okay, good. All right, let's do another example. Purple star 100 should make a star size 100 outline purple. Great. All right. Let's go back Two examples for each one, okay? So now I'm going to bring back up the word problem screen. Now I did that one example. I'm going to bring that back up so you can freeze here if you need to. Here's my example. Now you go ahead for these next three. Do the same thing that I did. Write the purpose, write the, uh, purpose statement underneath. And then two examples for each one of these. Um, three on your video notebook. So pause and do that. Great. So we did the examples. Once you have two or more examples, it's, it should be easy to identify what changed between them. In fact, the number of things that change should match the number of things in the function's domain. If the domain has a number and a string in it, then those two values um, should be the things that change. So identify what changed between your examples and use that information to define all four functions. So I will do the first one. So what changed in my purple star? Well, it's this 50 and 100, and I'm going to call that the size. So I can always go out here and put a semicolon, put a comment, and say size is the thing that changed. So to make my function definition, I'm going to say define. And I'm going to define something called purple star. And we decided that this thing that changed, the variable, is going to be size. All right. And the body is going to look like my examples, um, except star. Size is the thing that changed. And then I'm going to make outline purple. So 
there's my example of turning uh, my examples into the function definition. Now I'll go back to this page with the these on it in case you needed any more, but you shouldn't since you have your purpose definition. But now you use your examples for each one of these three word problems and um, make the function definition just like I did. So pause now. Okay, great. All right, good. So we did that. We went all the way from the problem to the uh, function definition. All right, we're going to do that again um, in your workbook. So turn to page 13 in your workbook. Yep, looks like that. Here's the, the red square problem. So circle the name of the function. So to do this in your workbook, circle the name of the function and underline what it takes in and what it produces. And then use that information to write the contract for this function. And then underneath the contract, write the purpose statement by summarizing what the function does in a single sentence. So in your so pause now and in your workbook page 13, do all of these things. Great. So remember that the contract and purpose statement um, can be used to begin to write the examples, even if you're not exactly sure how to begin. That's the great thing about the design recipe. You don't have to figure out everything from the beginning. You just have to do the steps in order and use the steps to figure out the next step. So using only the contract and purpose statement that you wrote. So in page 13, you should have written a contract and purpose statement. If you didn't, if you have a problem with that, find me because we need to build with all of these steps. So you can't skip a step um, because then you won't know how to build. So any of the steps where you get stuck, um, for the next few classes, anywhere you get stuck, just pause, come find me, and I'll help you with that part so that you can move on. All right, so you should have the contract and purpose statement. So we want to make examples because that's the next step. So every example begins with the name of the function. So where could you find the name of the function in what you've already written? Every example has to include sample inputs. Where could you find out how many how many inputs this function needs and what its types are? So that's in the contract, right? Every example has to have an expression for what the function should do with a given input. Um, so where can you look to find out what the function does? And then now you should be able to write two examples on your paper and circle the and label what is changing between them. So on page 13, um, after you figure these things out, write two examples uh, and then circle and label what is changing between them. So pause now and do that. Okay, great. So once the examples are written and the variables are labeled, it, then it's easy to write the function. So now use the contract, purpose statement, and examples and answer these questions. Every function definition begins with a name. So now we're going to move on from examples to function definition. So what's the name? Where did you write this already? Every definition has to include variable names for inputs. Where did you write down the variable names? Every definition should work exactly the way the examples did. So where could you look to figure that out? So now pause the video and go to page 13 and write the definition for your function. If you have a problem, if you have any problems writing the definition, go through these questions and that will help you write the definition. Okay. Now we're going to take it one step even further and actually run the red square program. So you'll notice that that um, you did everything on page 13, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so now that you've already done it, I'll do the same thing. Um, and then together we can type in and run uh, our red square program. So let me catch up. Um, Use the designer red square, which takes in a number, the size of the square, 
and outputs a solid red triangle whose length and width are the same sides. Sorry, red rectangle. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do my design recipe right here in my DR Dr. Racket. All right. So what do I need for a design recipe? The first thing I need is the contract, which has the name of the function. And it even tells me exactly what it should be called, red square. All right, and what does that take in? It takes in a number, what even, even nicely told me what it needs to take in. So it takes in a number, it's the domain of my function. And it produces a range, which is a solid red rectangle with some properties. All right, that is an image. Great. All right, now I'm going to do my purpose statement, which is one sentence summary. So I want to output a solid red rectangle. Solid red rectangle whose length and width are the same size. Whose length and width are the same size. Um, let's see. I want, to, I want to say about what I'm given. So I'm given the number. How about I say the same size which is given. It's pretty good for now. All right, examples. All right, well, we know that I need to start with the name of the function, and it's going to take in a number. So 50 is a good size, we know, for these images. So let's use that as an example. So it's going to take in a number, and that's all it does. And then we need to say what it does. Output a solid red rectangle. So here's where I like to just come down here and try some stuff. And based on what we know, we're just going to guess. Based on what we know. So a rectangle, we think it's probably 50. Ah, but it's not a square, right? So a square or a star, all these things are only taking one size. And based on the fact that our purpose statement says length and width, I'm going to guess that a rectangle takes in two sizes. So let's just try that. That's probably 50-50. And it's supposed to be solid and red. We'll see if this is the right way to do that. Pretty good. All right. So... That is a solid red rectangle, so we can go ahead and use that as an example. Uh, rectangle. Right, and it's, so it is um, a solid red rectangle whose length and width are the same size, which we know that a rectangle with the same size, length, and width is called a square. So... We can now make another example. Let's make it bigger. Um, oh, it's 77. All right, let's see. Let's make that a rectangle. And it's supposed to have the same size, 77. 77, solid. All right, so that's another good example. All right, now we want to, uh, to see what changes between those. So what changed on the input is the size. So I think we can use that, even though um, in, in the rectangle definition, length and width um, you know, are, are these, since they're the same, 
I think we can still use the, the, the variable name size um, here. So that's what I'm just going to call that size to remind myself. So to change it into a definition, we say define. And then we need the name of the function. And now, instead of 50 or 77, we want our variable name, which is size. OK. And then our body is going to be rectangle. And then for the length and the width, we're going to use the same variable, which makes it a square. That's what we expect. Size, size, solid, red. All right, now, so pause the video if you haven't typed this in yet and take what you um, put into your, um, on your paper. Um, hopefully your paper matches close to what I have. You should probably have different examples. And uh, go ahead and type out the contract, the um, purpose statement, two examples, and the function definition. So go ahead and pause now and make sure that you type all that out into Dr. Rocket. Okay, great. Now that we have that in Dr. Rocket, let's run it. So I'll run mine and then you can pause anytime and run yours. Uh, either the red square function is not yet defined or an example is above the definition. Oh yeah, we saw that before um, where it didn't like doing it in the order of the um, example. So I just cut that. I'm going to put it in here first and say, okay, even though we designed it the other way, the, the Dr. Rocket wants it uh, with the definition first, which is fine, because see, it has to use it for the example. It has to use our red square. So it says, hey, you need to define red square. So that's fine. So we can do, we can work on it in one order, and then the you put in a different order for the computer. So that's fine. All right. I didn't say there were any problems, so that's good. I thought it would say that two examples pass. I'm going to run that again. Okay. Um, let's run our two examples. Let's say red square 50 and red square 77. And we can say red square 62. All right, looks good. So hopefully yours looks good too. If you get that same um, message that I got, then just swap things around so the definition is first. All right, so you can pause any time and work on that. We're going to go back. So we did that. Extending red square. All right, some functions take more than one input. The red square function always makes solid red squares with the size being the only thing that varies. Suppose, however, that we wanted the function to make red squares that could be either solid or outline. This would mean that both the size and the style can vary, so a user might type red square 50 solid or red square 50 outline. So how would that change the domain of the function? How would the examples have to change? And how would the definition change? So change each part of the code you type to allow red square to take in a solid or outline as a second argument. Okay, we can do that. So, as they pointed out, um, this is really similar to our previous one. So, I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And I'm going to put it back in our design order. All right. Now, let's make it, how about new red square? New red square. And what did they say we want to change? So you can take in red square, solid, or outline as a second argument. So it's still going to produce the same domain, 
but our I'm saying range, but our domain has changed from just number to number and um, what do we call that solid or outline style? How about that style? Uh, which is just a string for our contract, right? It's just the the type of it, so it's just a string. So, but but our purpose statement will be more specific. I'll put a solid red. I'll put a red rectangle. How about in the given style, whose length and width are the same size, which is given. All right, and um, so let's do one that's solid. So that doesn't have to change, right, because it's still a solid red rectangle 50. But now let's make this one um, outline. Is that what it is? Uh, outline, yes outline. So that's going to change this one to outline. All right, so there's two examples. Now we see two things that are changing between these two lines, 50 and 77, so the size is changing, but also this style is changing. So we'll call that style. All right, so now when we change it to our example to our function, we need two parts because the contract says we need a string and that string is going to be called style that variable and that instead of solid being what we call hard-coded here it's going to be a variable called style all right so I think that's going to be good let's I'm going to cut that and put it on top just so we can run the examples I'm going to hit run Ah, except, yep, see, good. Um, it caught this problem. Red square was already defined up here. So, my, this function name is supposed to match my contract. So, new, new, and new. Run. Okay, that's good. Let's do one. Oops, I forgot my opening paren. New red square. 50. Good. Good. And in fact, if there's other styles, let's see, do I still have the documentation up? I do. What else do we have? Oh, mode is just solid or outline. Okay. So we can't do striped or anything, I don't think. Okay. Good deal. So um, make sure you so go ahead and extend your uh, red square so that it can do these things too. So pause now and do that. All right, we did that. Okay, now, um, so uh, the design recipe can be used for functions that take any number of inputs. So, um, as an example, look at the word problem that's on page 14 of your workbook. So on page 14 of your workbook, we're going to go through the same process of defining a contract, um, writing the contract, writing the purpose statement, writing the examples, and writing the definition. And here's the, the questions that help you go through those step by step if you forget. So go ahead and pause now and do all of these things for the word problem on page 14 of your workbook. Okay, great. All right, as a final step, take your function definition that you wrote on page 14 and type that into Dr. Racket and um, make sure that it works. So pause now and do that. All right, great.
Good job. You've done a lot of great practice at um, using the design recipe to, to write functions to solve word problems. So next time, we'll see that the same design recipe, the thing that you just practiced um, many times, can be used to solve word problems in algebra also. So I'll see you next time.